All right, time now for Talk Talkers. And, uh, of course, today's uh, subject is the U.S. Uh, presidential election. Voting now underway in several states. And uh, we're going to talk, we're going to delve into some of the issues, the candidates, and find out what our panel thinks of uh, both Republican uh, Mitt Romney and uh, our current, uh, the U.S. current president, Barack Obama. Joining us today, we have, um, well, at the end, Jeff Hopper, our own Jeff Hopper. Mm -hmm. In the middle, we've got Steve Lloyd from the Team 1200. Thanks for joining us, Steve. And Daryl Kornicke from uh, Bob FM, thanks to all of you for being here today. I want to get right into Obama versus Romney. Who you like and why? <laughs> Lord, 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 I got a choice or two. Yeah. One or the other. It's like picking between two flavors of ice cream at this point. Uh, you better <laughs> like one of them. Um, well, you don't have to like either. Well, well, uh, yeah, but in, in that case, if you don't like either and you don't make a decision, you're sitting off to the side and you've really just waved off any say that you have over the next couple of years. So, I mean, really, neither one of them has really said what they're going to do other than what they want to do. Mm -hmm. So at this point, it's like going with the devil, I think, that you know probably a little better at this point. I think a lot of Americans will do that, those undecided voters and all those swing states. I think the hurricane states. helped a little bit, too, because yeah. certainly Republicans supporting the president, I think that was probably a key mark right there. Governor Chris Christie is who you're right. talking Absolutely. about in New Jersey yeah. coming out and saying, although he says he was still going to vote for Romney, saying that uh, Barack Obama really handled the uh, hurricane sand and all the fallout from it quite well. What do you think, Steve? Who, who do you like? I don't know. I, I, I would have to go with the incumbent on this one as well. Uh, obviously, it's a unique position being Canadian. We're flies on the wall on this, and it's more of an entertainment for us when like, we watch the debates and, and Twitter blows up and everybody's getting ripped, and, you know, we don't have a vested interest other than, you know, it's a, it's a bit, pretty big economy we share a border with, so we should pay attention. If it was me, I, I would go incumbent. Romney scares me a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe because Donald Trump supports him so much <laughs> and, 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 the, and, the way, and the way that he's come off on it. I mean, I mean, Trump tried to turn Sandy into a political football. Yeah. He, started, he started being critical, saying, oh, where's global warming? Oh, yeah, that's the issue right now. Like, let's talk about that. How about the people? Anyways. I want to get back to what you mentioned about us as Canadians and, and how it affects us. But, Jeff, what do you think? I think that uh, you can't... Uh, Un, uh, overstate the challenge that uh, the Obama administration has had in their first term of office in terms of what they've had to deal with. Remember that they, the bank crisis, uh, Detroit fell apart, we had massive recession, uh, and it depends on whether or not you think he took the right steps trying to repair that. And we, this is not something that gets repaired in one term. If you think he's on the right track, then you support that. I happen to think that he's done some significant things to, uh, to make sure that uh, life gets better. Uh, Detroit being one of his big uh, proving grounds where Romney said, we should have let Detroit go bankrupt, and then now we know that Detroit's come back healthier and actually has become a moneymaker in some cases for the United States. Of course, Michigan, closer to Ohio, a neighboring state in terms of oh, yeah. Ohio is the key. That's what we're all watching this morning, and I believe it's 18 electoral votes up for grabs there. Uh, it is so important for whichever candidate takes Ohio, that basically, they say, will determine uh, the election. Ohio is one of those interesting states. They were very much, I believe it's one in eight workers in Ohio are linked to the auto industry. Mm. And we all know Barack Obama a few years ago bailed out the auto industry in that area of the, in, in that part of the U.S. Crucial to the election is the economy. And that will come into play in likely how Americans make the decision. Do you see that? I mean, we're Canadians, so we have our own issues here. Of course, the economy is one of it. Do you see that as being one of their biggest issues, the economy, their primary issue that they should be voting on? Absolutely. I mean, when you when when you look at their, their level of inflation and you actually assume that it's probably twice as much as, as what's being shown because so many people are no longer even in the system. Um, and, and, and I mean, the separation you have down there, especially with the economy, I mean, still half of their country lives in rural U.S., and there's mm -hmm. a total different way of approaching the way your day goes, mm -hmm. as opposed to mm -hmm. the big cities where people are running and trying to maintain their jobs. And, and you know, I mean, again, the, the entire country is 50% industrialized and 50%, you know, uh, farm related. So. There's totally different concerns on both of them. I, absolutely. Think, I think the economy is always the issue, and even when the economy is in great shape, that usually means the incumbent wins. So right. the economy is all, if you're running a great economy, you're probably going to get a second term, and so it's almost always the key issue. And then, of course, whether you think the economy is in great shape in the U.S. Mm -hmm. right now depends on who you ask. And the economy, right. would you say, is the number one issue that affects us as Canadians? Not the Keystone XL pipeline, not the border. Would you put that economy as the number one thing? Because they're for still our number one trading partner. Yeah, and they always will be. I, I think it'll always be a number one issue with Canadians. So that, that is something finite that we can, we can look at uh, with the Americans. And it is, you know, throughout this recession that we're still not 
not fully out of. You know, Canada has been, as we all know, far uh, well off uh, compared to uh, compared to the United States. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, and, and getting just getting back to well, Barack Obama was in power for the last four years. Uh, just as a Canadian, if I'm trying to you know uh, wrap my head around this, that's why I might be more inclined to go with the incumbent. It's interesting, though, this, to see the social media sites, to see Facebook and what's happening right now, because it seems ideologically Canadians are siding with Obama. That's what I see on there, mm -hmm. that, uh, that it's the ideology that has the average Canadian uh, supporting him, not necessarily the economy. All right. Especially if you're Springsteen fans. So. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yes. Yeah, on that note, if you're a Springsteen, in Springsteen fan, he's had him out at uh, some, quite a few of the rallies. Nice of course, his last one last night. Yes. All right. Thanks to all of you. Uh, great panel. Good discussion today. And, of course, uh, we'll be talking about the U.S. election for some time to come. We'll find out where things stand tomorrow morning.